What's the difference between frost and cold protection? If you grow tropical plants or any plant that takes damage during the winter time, you need to understand the difference because not knowing the difference can mean life or death for your plants. So let's get started. Frost protection. In order to understand frost protection, you need to understand what frost is. Frost is just water in the air in its gaseous state. When the temperatures uh, drop, suddenly especially, that water will turn from gas into liquid and it will precipitate into the ground, getting your plants wet. The water itself is not a problem. The problem is the temperature. If the temperature keeps on dropping, what's going to happen is that water is going to freeze on your plants, creating frost. This frost will damage your plants, just like if you put ice against your skin, what do you think is going to happen? You will also get frostbite, so it's no different from your plants. So how do we protect frost sensitive plants? This plant right here is my Swiss cheese plant, also known as Monstera Deliciosa. A lot of you grow this plant indoors, but surprisingly it does amazingly outside until winter hits. This plant in my area is frost sensitive. So when frost protecting your plants, the main goal that you're trying to achieve is to prevent your plant from getting wet. If you prevent your plant from getting wet and your plant is not wet by the time it gets cold, there won't be any water to freeze against your plant. So like I said, main goal that you have when frost protecting your plants is to prevent your plant from getting wet. Now the way I protect my Swiss cheese plant every single winter is by simply covering it. Put a barrier between the sky and your plant so that way when the water precipitates it falls to the ground like rain when it gets super cold the barrier that you put in between your plant and the open sky is going to catch the water so your plant does not get wet just like this one right here when it gets super cold I cover my plant one time just like this one right here and I do not open it at all until I know for sure a hundred percent that the chances of frost in my area are over. A lot of people worry about the sun and the plant not getting any sun. You have to understand if it's cold at night, your plant's not going to grow. So even if your plant is in full darkness, it doesn't matter in the winter time because your plant's not growing. Your plant needs warm night temperatures in order to grow. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm lazy. I got a lot of plants to cover and I don't wanna do this 24 7 non-stop during the winter time I got other things to do as well so what I do is I cover my plants one time and they stay like this for the entire winter and guess what my plants are alive they grow when they're supposed to grow and that does not harm them a lot of people like to take the cover off put it back on when the chances of frost are uh, expected for that night and then put it back on and that's a lot of work and you know what's gonna happen if you forget one time you're gonna lose everything you work for in one single single night. So the best thing to do is to cover your plants, lift them as is, if you are able to, and that way you know for sure your plant's gonna be protected and you don't have to worry about it. So this is frost protection. So let's say you protected your plant, you frost protected it, and it still took damage. So what does that mean for you? Well, it means your plant is cold sensitive, not just frost sensitive. Yes, there is a difference between frost protection and cold protection. This is my fruit punch mango. If you guys uh, watched my videos before, you've seen this mango tree before. Now this plant is cold sensitive in my area. So the way I protect cold sensitive plants is by simply changing the ambient temperature around the plant. There are two ways you can do this. One way is by using natural microclimates. What that means is there are areas in your yard or your entire city or your entire neighborhood that is going to be warmer than the actual forecasted temperatures. Like this area right here, it's underneath my, underneath my pine trees. The temperatures in here, even though it's shaded, it's actually five degrees warmer than out there in the open sky. Now over here, you guys seen this mango tree as well. This is a hatcher mango. A normal mild winter in my area, my temperatures are going to drop in the mid-20s briefly just for a few hours. If that is the case, this mango right here does not need 
a cold structure to change the ambient temperature around the mango tree. The microclimate, the natural microclimate in this area is warm enough to keep this plant alive during the winter time without any protection. But you have to understand, the temperatures every single winter are going to be different. You may go through one winter and your microclimate was enough to keep your plant alive. But then the following winter the temperatures are colder and you will lose everything simply because you got complacent and you thought the microclimate was going to be warm enough for your cold sensitive plant to survive. This is what happened to me. This hatcher mango is actually way bigger than what you see in here. But a few years ago, my temperatures dropped down to 19 degrees for like about 12 hours straight for several nights in a row. I lost over 50% of the tree and the tree took two years or so to actually come back from it. Thankfully it did not die, but at that time I did not have a cold structure like this one here because for the past few winters I did not need it because it was warm enough in this environment here to keep that mango tree alive. But when my temperatures dropped that cold, no amount of natural microclimate was going to help me. So since then, I don't trust the forecast. I just spec the worst and I, and I built a cold structure even though my tree is in a nice microclimate. So that way if the temperatures drop that much, then my tree is going to be protected. Second way to protect your cold sensitive plant is by artificially creating a microclimate. The main goal when protecting cold sensitive plants is you need to change the ambient temperature around your plant. Every plant's going to be a little different, so some plants will take damage earlier than others. But normally, for me, all my plants will make it in the low 30s, no issues. The problem that I have is going to be when the temperatures linger in the 20s. Mid 20s, low 20s, at that point, you need a cold structure because that's the only effective way to actually hold the heat around your plant. So like I said, this is my fruit punch right here. Every single year we built a cold frame just like this one. This cold frame will keep my mango tree inside happy in the high 20s without any additional heat. The plant will survive and it will be fine. Just like this morning, the outside temperature out here was 27 degrees, but inside the structure, it was actually 33 degrees. Now you have to understand, you just have to change the temperature high enough to keep your plant alive. It's not gonna thrive, it's not gonna grow amazingly, it's just going to survive. And it doesn't have to be by much. But you can see 27 degrees outside, my mango is fine in here, no issues at all. This holds the heat very well, but I have to do this every single winter. Now, if my temperatures drop even lower than high 20s, in the low 20s, or even if I suspect it's going to be in the teens, at that point, this structure is not going to be enough. At that point, you need additional heat. And I'm talking about actual heaters, not Christmas lights. Christmas lights are worthless. If you think your Christmas lights are gonna warm up your trees, just go outside when it's cold, wrap, wrap yourself around with Christmas lights, and if you actually feel warmer, then they are going to work on your plant. But if you're still cold, guess what's gonna happen to your plant? It's still going to be cold. So what I use instead is actual stuff that works. So I have two different kinds of heaters that I use. This one right here is 500 watts, and it's an electric heater. So when I think my temperatures are gonna linger in the mid 20s or lower, or if I'm not sure, I just turn the heater on inside that structure and it keeps it warm in there. If my temperature out here is, let's say 20 degrees, inside that structure, it will be in the mid 30s, just with this little heater right here. But this is electric. If you don't have an outlet nearby, then another thing you can do is use a propane heater like this one right here. They call this golf cart heaters. This one right here on the low setting is about 2000 BTUs. And this little container right there will last you overnight. So what you do is, before you go to bed, you just put the heater inside, turn it on, and then it will keep your structure warm inside and your tree is going to be happy. Frost and cold protection is a term you probably have not heard before. And simply because as most people do not know the difference. Frost and cold protection it's going to mainly apply for zones 
9A and 9B. Any colder than that, at that point, all your tropical plants are going to get destroyed. So knowing the difference between the two will actually increase the chances of your tropical plants or any other cold sensitive plant or frost sensitive plant to survive during the winter time. If you're not sure what kind of protection your plant needs, well, just ask in the comment section below or join me on social media and ask if your plant needs frost or cold protection. You can also go on my website. A lot of the plants that we sell here at the nursery under the winter uh, protection section, we actually specify if your plant needs frost protection or cold protection because we like to give you as much information as possible whenever you buy any of our plants. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.